I'll yell out, um, I'll be yelling out the time and coordinates and the station ID. Yeah, okay. All right, everything secure? Yep. All right, just be ready with that camera. It's right. It's right. Very, very hey everyone, my name is Charlotte Berger and I'm an intern for New York Sea Grant. This Friday I joined Elena, an environmental analyst, and Jenna, an environmental technician from Save the Sound, on a water monitoring trip for the Unified Water Study in East Chester Bay, New York. The Unified Water Study is a standardized water sampling protocol managed by Save the Sound and carried out by a network of community groups and organizations in bays, inlets, and harbors around Long Island Sound. It was officially launched in 2017. Before then, local groups did their own water quality monitoring around the sound, but each had their own procedures. Since people were collecting data differently across the board, it made sharing and comparing data pretty difficult. But almost 10 years ago, resource managers and partners at the Long Island Sound Study National Estuary Program began to identify this need for coordinated embayment monitoring. So, they prioritized and supported the development of a community-based water quality monitoring program centered on bays and harbors in Long Island Sound. There was no data really in the bays and harbors, and we realized you know, it's not really accurate to take what's happening out in the deeper waters and say that that is also reflective of what's going on in the shallower um, you know, waters in these bays and harbors. So, we decided let's create, you know, a, a community study where everyone's following exact same procedures mm -hmm. and um, have them each kind of, you know, monitor their own local bay and harbor. Now, in 2021, there are a total of 24 groups monitoring a whole 41 bays and harbors. 84195 80827. Perfect. Uh, totaled up is 525. The Unified Water Study Protocol has two sampling tiers. Tier 1 includes sampling dissolved oxygen, turbidity, chlorophyll, qualitative macrophyte surveys, temperature, and salinity. All groups in the Unified Water Study do Tier 1 sampling. Some groups also participate in Tier 2 sampling. Tier 2 includes collecting water samples for nutrient analysis, quantitative macrophyte surveys, and data loggers that continuously collect temperature, dissolved oxygen, barometric pressure, and salinity data, among some other parameters. Today, Jenna and Elena are doing both Tier 1 and Tier 2 sampling. The sampling protocol for these tiers is based on the EPA-approved Quality Assurance Project Plan, or QAP. Peter Jano from Friends of the Bay, the Unified Water Study Monitoring Group, explained it to me further. We use the same equipment. We do uh, the same standards, testing of the equipment itself to make sure that it's calibrated properly. Um, and then when we go out on the water, we're all following the same process procedures, which makes it repeatable, which makes it reliable, which makes it um, valuable to people who are doing the longer term research, doing the trend analysis on water quality throughout the Long Island Sound watershed area. Kelsey Wentling, River Steward from Connecticut River Conservancy, another unified water study sampling group, explained another part of tier one to me, macrophyte surveys. Macrophytes are aquatic plants or algae that grow near to or in water. For three outings in the middle of the summer, we also do macrophyte sampling. So. We go to three different stations and we do a bunch of what are called rake tosses, which are just how they sound. We toss the rake off the boat and drag it up. And then we take a photo of all the plant material on that rake and we use this as sort of qualitative data to supplement and enhance the quantitative data we're collecting with the monitoring. These macrophyte surveys help to determine how much algae is in the water, which can tell us a lot about the nutrient content of the water. Another way that the Unified Water Study determines nutrient content is through dissolved oxygen and chlorophyll sampling. So these parameters, specifically dissolved oxygen and the phytoplankton, uh, the chlorophyll that is that we're measuring, is the biggest you know, indication of maybe an issue with nitrogen. So basically if you give a lot of nitrogen, either the seaweed or the phytoplankton loves that, they start growing out of control if you have too much, things are out of balance. And then this is when you see those really, you know, drop, big drops in dissolved oxygen, which is what you don't want. So how do nitrogen and other nutrients enter the sound? You know, one of the biggest sources would be sewage, although there's a lot of other various sources of that. Sewage, and therefore nitrogen, enters the sound through point sources and non-point sources. Point sources are single, easy-to-spot sources of pollution, while non-point sources are spread out and a little harder to identify. The largest point source polluters are wastewater treatment plants and the pipes that carry wastewater to them. 
So New York City has a combined sewer system, which means that stormwater and sewage are carried through the same pipes to wastewater treatment plants. However, when it rains heavily, these pipes can overflow, and then the excess gets dumped straight into surrounding waters like the East River and Long Island Sound. This is known as a CSO, or Combined Sewer Overflow, or outfall. One of the largest non-point sources of nutrient pollution in this region are the on-site septic systems in our own homes, which can also contribute to poorly treated sewage leaching nitrogen into the groundwater, rivers, and tributaries that feed into the sound. It's really important to also collect it in whatever tributaries that are emptying out further upstream into the Bay or Harbor that we're monitoring. In this specific embayment, East Chester Bay, the tributary that you know feeds into here is the Hutchinson River. You need to do collect data, number one, to establish that, okay, yeah, there is indeed a problem. Top of that, you know, okay, you have a problem, the water body's impaired, but why? You know, how do you even begin to fix it? And how would you know where to start if you don't know what the data is? Or if the data says, hey, you know, things are doing well, let's maintain this. We're doing this, this, and this right. Let's keep it up. In the latest Long Island Sound report card, Save the Sound was able to use unified water study data to assess the water quality of embayments and harbors in the Sound. In the past, the report card was really only focused on the quality of the water in the middle of the Sound, far from the shore. Last year, each bay, harbor, and embayment was given a grade, which showed the quality of the water according to several different parameters. Every two or three years, Save the Sound is putting out a report card. So every embayment, estuary, whatever it might be that's being tested, has a group going out checking for water quality, that area gets a grade. We do see basic trends getting better. A big one for that is nitrogen that we're finding in the water. And when we do our testing, at least in Cold Spring Harbor, where I spend most of my time, the numbers are often very troubling. We're identifying which areas are really the hot spots, the bad spots, the trouble spots. And the interest there is to get data that we can take to decision makers, stakeholders, the elected officials who make decisions on what we can do and where we need to put money to fix problems. And we identify these problem areas. So one of them for me is right where I grew up and that's inner Cold Spring Harbor. Last report card, we received an F. So what this does is it gives scientists an update to where we stand, but it also lets, lets the common folk and our local elected officials know what's going on. As you've heard, the data collected through Unified Water Study plays an important role in protecting the health of Long Island Sound. Mary Donato from Harbor Watch spoke about how poor water quality not only affects humans, but also plant and animal life too. Water quality monitoring is crucial to the health of the entire ecosystem and not just the water. Um, Harbor Watch monitors water quality in order to address pollution threats to both human health and the health of other organisms. Um, issues in water quality can travel pretty long distances and affect a wide range of people, plants, and animals, um, and can often be invisible or kind of hard to detect. I also asked her about what she thought the future would hold for the Unified Water Study. So although there are many pollution threats to Long Island Sound, more and more groups like those who participate in UWS are joining in to try to find and address those threats. Um, I predict that the more we understand the water quality issues up through projects such as this, the more we can continue to you know, lessen the impacts and problems um, like pollution, hypoxia, and all sorts of other problems affecting the sound. Long Island Sound is particularly impacted by nitrogen pollution. So to help reduce the amount of nitrogen entering the sound, there are a few simple things that you can do today. By reducing water use, like taking a shorter shower, for example, lowering the amount of fertilizer that you use on your lawn, picking up after your pet and not littering, you can also help protect the health of Long Island Sound for the future.